made a good decision with a car. When I get in and I start it up, I get out onto the street. If I have a big smile on my face, I know I've made a wonderful decision. And this car delivers it every single time. It's so loud in the cabin. Just a hair under illegal. And inside, it's a one-car Trans Am race. And I love it. I love every second of it. I never knew I was destined to be someone who craves the experience of a street legal race car. But that's really me. And by that I don't mean racing on streets, I just mean driving a race car on the streets. I can relive any race in the Trans Am Series from 1968 to 69 on my way up to 45 miles an hour. <laughs> it's that loud through the first couple of gears. And then out in the highway, it's just a dream. Spike Ferriston, and I'm driving a 1968 911L Porsche factory race car built for the Trans Am Racing Series in 1968. Trans Am Racing Series was started in 1966 and it was this really raucous racing experience, driver versus driver, that evolved into a manufacturer competing against manufacturer, lots of turns, mostly known for the pony cars. And then there was the under two liter class, which was mostly European sedans, uh, Alfa Romeo, Austin Mini Cooper, the Lotus Cortina, and the Porsche 911 L. There were a lot of famous names racing in this series. George Fulmer, uh, Mark Donahue. This car was raced by a fella uh, by the name of Fred Baker. Not as well known in the racing community, but he was the son of the people who invented Tonka trucks. And instead of going into the Tonka truck business, he took his money and he raced. This car was ordered for the 68 Trans Am Racing Series, and there wasn't enough time to actually get it to Fred's place in Minnesota. So what they did is they had it delivered to the track at Sebring, where they had about 10 hours to get it prepped and ready to race. And on its first lap at Sebring, it was immortalized by Porsche. There was a photographer there who took this picture it ended up being this iconic image that was on their motorsports catalog, on the posters, and, and their advertising the following year. In 1969, it raced uh, Irish Hills four hour uh, with co-driver Dickie Smothers, and they won first place. Well, that's meaningful to me because he was obviously a comedy guy and a car guy, and that's kind of what I am too. What I love about this car thing that we all share is somebody slipped me his number and I, I called Dick's mother's. He picked up the phone and talked to me for two hours about not just the car, just about himself, his life, and then his show on CBS. And this shared love of cars is very inclusive and I've never really run up against that in any other place, certainly not in entertainment. You can call anybody and they're happy to get on the phone with you, even if they're the head of a company or a celebrity like Dickie Smothers. I was a motorcycle guy for a while, I drove a lot of motorcycles and I l always loved going fast. But when I went to New York and I rode for David Letterman, that's when my eyes were really open to a lot of different cars, especially Porsche. Dave let me drive cars in his collection. And each one of the cars he put me in blew my mind. So I called a dealership in a magazine in Georgia and they shipped up this old 911 with about 300,000 miles and lots of rust. Sepia brown, worst color in Porsche history. I was instantly in love with it. You know, before I had kids, I had three or four early 70s 911s. After I had kids, I didn't have much time. So uh, I ended up selling those cars. And as the kids got older, I thought about reconnecting with an old 911. So I started looking for something older and different that I didn't know. 
Then along came this car. I, I lost my mind about the story. It was one of five built by the factory to race in the Trans Am series, so very, very rare. And the fella that owned it bought it on a used car lot in 1973. It had 9,000 original miles on it, even though the motor had been replaced, it burned out the first season. You know, I looked at the steering wheel, I looked at the wheels, I saw the roll bar, I saw the no sound deadening. I mean, it was uh, obviously a lightweight car, akin to a 911R. It was in fantastic condition, and I knew if I didn't act, I wouldn't get the car. So I bought it right then and there. It was only after that that I learned that this was a car that I had been seeing probably every month for 10 years in Seinfeld's hangar on a poster. And it was a, a car that uh, I don't really want a red 911 or a red car at all, but if I ever came across that car, I would buy that car. And how funny is it that I had just bought it and didn't even know. Race cars weren't really worth anything. You know, they were raced and crashed and smashed and new engines and new configurations. So up until maybe 10 years ago, they were considered junk. Then, you know, a few people who knew and liked these races and recognized these cars and saw them on posters thought, well, what do you mean? It's got a title? I could, I could put a license plate on that and just drive it and pick up groceries? Well, that would be something. That would be a new experience. And for me, that's irresistible and drop my kids off at school in it, take my wife out on a date in it. I did it once, you won't go on more than one. <laughs> it's a little too loud. And then take it to the racetrack, and then take it out into the canyons on the weekend. For me, that's, that's the whole car experience. It's, it's me living a life beyond my wildest car dreams. I, I, I'm not a golfer, I can't stand it. I work in entertainment, and to me, that's professional racing. And what I mean by that is, at any moment, I can crash and burn and die, or have a glorious win, and it's all very public. In other words, it's very stressful. So for me, there's nothing I love more than getting in a car with one of my kids, or one of my friends, and taking a nice drive out to Malibu in the PCH, having a cup of coffee, and talking about that experience, and what made it so great, and why, these cars, and this car in particular, made my afternoon.